Welcome to the Raw Food Health Empowerment Podcast. I'm your host, Samantha Salmon, Certified Holistic Health Coach and author of You Can Afford to Be Healthy. And this podcast looks at a holistic approach to health from a multi-generational and multinational perspective of women of color. Welcome to the Raw Food Health Empowerment Podcast. I am so excited to be talking today to Jamila Alfred back again to talk to us about a special event that's coming up. Jamila, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah. So tell us about Afro Vegan Society and how you got involved. All right, so Afro-Vegan Society started as like a brainchild around 2017. Me, Brenda Sanders, and another um, ex-coworker, we all worked in mainstream animal rights. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as us as Black women and femmes, uh, all locked up, very pro-Black, very social justice oriented, as well as vegan oriented, we were just kind of fed up and sick of it. You you know, we all know that representation matters um, to an extent because it can be performative, but we just realized we wanted to work with you know, people who look like us, people who had similar experiences, uh, similar outlooks on life and and things like that. But when Brenda Sanders, our executive director, uh, she got grants, she made it happen. She's so amazing when it comes to things like that because she put her mind to it and she made it happen. So once she did, she hit me and the ex coworker up and we dropped everything we did and went right to her um, to support this nonprofit because how could you not? Um, So- so what we represent is, I mean, I would say it's it's similar to other vegan and organizations. However, our aim is to give resources, very affordable, accessible resources to black and brown communities, specifically black, uh, to help them transition into vegan living. So we understand, you know, the financial aspects of, of everything, cultural aspects uh, to why certain people, you know, do not want to or cannot go vegan. So we want to make sure that we have free or very affordable resources to show them what veganism really is um, from a perspective of a Black person. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much it. We just do everything we can. We just want to make sure we have recipes, uh, you know, lists of other Black, you know, vegan creators, Black vegan food, you know, businesses and restaurants, just to have all those things in an arsenal. So other Black people who are veg curious can be like, look, I can do this. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much um, our, our spiel. If you, if you will. <laughs> that is so cool. Some black vegan sisters got together and said, let's make change. And I love that. That is so inspirational. Like I love it so much. So what, what was the inspiration behind NAVCON? What you're coining NAVCON? Like, what is mm-hmm. that? What does that stand for? And what's your inspiration behind it? All right. So NAVCON is our national Afro vegan virtual conference. Uh, we like to, you know, because NAVCON is pretty cute and like a digestible little word to pass around. Um, but this is our virtual summit because, you know, it's going to be a little bit shorter this year and, you know, it's not going to be all out because, you know, a conference is usually like a whole weekend. But, you know, we just want to make this a little bit more bite sized, um, especially since we want to do a little bit more things to it this year. But yeah, our inspiration behind NAVCON, we've been to animal rights organiz- you know, organizations and their conferences in the past. You know, you pretty much have to when you're doing vegan work. And you know, although those conferences are, you know, they're they're fine, but you know, there's not many that have a lot of people, once again, who look like us, who think like us, who have had similar experiences. Mm-hmm. So we wanted a place where black vegans, black veg curious anyone of any cultural background, really, we, we're not just inviting Black people to this conference. NAVCON is for everybody, like of every ability, every financial status, every, you know, your gender, your sexuality, it does not matter. We want everyone to have access to this type of information. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to not only focus on animal rights, which we definitely do in our own way, But, you know, which is usually typical of a vegan conference, we wanted to also pair other things that have to do with veganism, especially Afro-veganism. So we wanted to also address climate change. Uh, We also wanted to address food justice, food injustice, food apartheid. We also wanted to address like plant-based health um, from actual medical doctors that, you know, we always have Dr. Mills on. We always have, uh, you know, Tracy McWhorter on. You know, we have real people who can back up this type of information through these panels and information sessions. And, you know, we also like to, you know, have food. So 
we have our cooking demos as well because we know that our audience are foodies and we're vegan foodies as well. So we're gonna have great cooking demos from people who are really, really awesome online. I'm not gonna say much about it yet because y'all definitely gonna see it soon, but we're really, really excited for NAVCON to come out so everyone can experience this. So it sounds like there are gonna be a lot of surprises because <laughs> I didn't see a speaker list on the website definitely coming soon <laughs> so it sounds big it sounds big and I love Dr. Milton Mills I love that he you know is being seen and exists like because we didn't really have black vegan doctors really talking so much before I mean they've been definitely a minority group so I'm just I'm so excited that you know he's out and he's about to write a book so I'm excited about that <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, he's yeah. amazing. Like when he yeah. speaks, just ooh. You and just he has that fire it. and that passion, which we need, you know, we need that. We need that because yeah. it's a sense of urgency for our community. I don't know about other communities, but for sure, for us, this is a life or death situation. And so the urgency is definitely there. So I completely uh, feel him and his passion and I love and appreciate him. So I'm glad that okay. he's going to be there. So um, what else can folks look forward to? I know a lot of stuff is hush hush, but what can you <laughs> tell us? What can you, what little secrets can you break here? Exclusive. <laughs> oh my God, what can I say? Um, <laughs> honestly, by the time this comes out, there's going to be people, um, we're probably going to be, you know, telling people who, who's coming out anyway, but we're gonna have cooking demos from Cooking with Joya. We're definitely, once again, gonna have Dr. Milton Mills, things like that. We're gonna have people like John Lewis on. Oh, wow. um, we're gonna have people, um, Eugene Cook from Grow Where You Are. Yes. We're gonna have people who are basically good, big names in their industry. Um, what else can I say? Love that Eugene. He's, he's, he oh. was on the Raw Food Health Empowerment Summit. Oh, talking wow. oh, about yeah. veganic growing, yeah, yeah. Yes, love his work fantastic. yeah he's just wow wow um so we're definitely excited for that um and I want to say more but things are still in the air yeah but you could also possibly look forward to seeing more of the Afro Vegan Society team I know you know when we do content sometimes it can just be me or it can just be our um director of programming Jessica Carter uh, but it's not going to just be, you know, either, or we're probably going to be all doing something live. Maybe so how you know? many, how many people are on the team? Technically like five. Oh, wow. Technically five, but four, three who do things online that you see. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, you know, let's, yeah, four and a half, five. Yeah. Cause you're, yeah, so we're very you're team. based out of um, Maryland, right? Mm -hmm. We're in Baltimore In Baltimore. So you're doing a lot of stuff on the ground. I assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Locally. Before the pandemic, we did a lot of, I don't want to say total, just complete food access work. That's what Brenda does mm -hmm. uh, in the city. But before the pandemic, we, you know, when we had our own community center, we would host events where we would make food ourselves. Uh, we, you know, we got it paid for by something else. We would get the food ourselves, cook it by hand with love and have it for free for everybody to enjoy, not just vegans, but people off the street. Anyone who wanted to have this food was welcome to do so. So that's kind of our vibe. Um, yeah, grassroots. I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. That's awesome. So what does a more just and sustainable future look like for you? Because that's really the theme of this year's conference, right? Definitely, definitely. What's your vision of that? You know what? There is just... It's so hard to say because me personally, I can't speak on behalf of the ABS team with that. Mm -hmm. But for me, it just means making sure that people's needs are met because mm -hmm. that's what it really comes down to. There is just some sort of like, it's it, it goes beyond and it's more deep than a lack of empathy or remorse for what other people are going through. There is just some sort of conditioning that we experience as soon as we come out the womb that makes us feel individual from other people. And therefore we when we lose that connection, we don't even want to understand somebody's situation or want to understand that they're suffering. And, you know, we're like, oh, that's not my problem. Who cares? But I can guarantee someone that somebody else's problem is your problem because yeah. we, we don't want people to suffer. And the fact that somebody's suffering is enough. So I, I think that to create a more just and sustainable future is, is, pretty much seeing the connection we have with other beings, regardless of race, class, gender, sexuality, all the isms, but 
making action towards a better future rather than just sitting around and talking about it. So like, you know, do what you can, make sure that you're, you know, eating as local as possible, whatever you can do, uh, you know, make sure that we're not using oppressive language towards other people, making sure that we're being as, you know, eco-friendly as possible, whatever that may look like for, for anybody. I just feel like for wherever we are, a just and sustainable future can be created through our action. Mm -hmm. um, and through our connection with other people. Um, but once again, if you don't have empathy, if you don't have compassion, who's to say that that can even be accomplished? So yeah, just and sustainability is always about our action and our connection, most of. That's awesome, yeah. And you know, it's definitely a journey because I know, I'm gonna just put myself on blast. I have areas that I'm working on too. You know, um, okay. before, the actually after this episode goes live, we're having three episodes on dealing with uh, racism within families, you know, for mm. multicultural families, 2020 was very difficult. And, you know, before 2020, we thought we were all love and on the same page, but uh, Trump brought out something in some of our family members and we learned something. So it was a very tough time. And then also, what emerged over, I feel like the last couple years that is new to me is um, language around ableism and like disability justice and neurodivergence and things, which we're gonna be talking about and like where that intersects with our work in trying to bring about health equity in our community. So it's, it's definitely, um, it's a growing, it's a journey, you know, like we're learning and growing together. So I really appreciate you mentioning all of that because we do, it's like what you, the, the gist of what I heard you say was all about intention. Like if we have the intention to do good and to have empathy, to understand, like we don't have to agree, but we right. can just try to have some understanding, you know, okay. um, this this will help bring about some really useful change in terms of, you know, more, like you said, just and sustainable society. So I love that. I'm really excited to hear the talks because just based off of what you said in the theme, I know it's going to be very deep, very, very deep. So I'm just, you know, <laughs> ready yeah. to sit in all of it and just get bathed in um, some, some knowledge bombs, some, some gems to really help us evolve, you know, consciously. Absolutely. And to tell you the truth, I'm excited for the talks because like, I already know these people are going to like enlighten, like not only just us as the AVS team, but everybody else that's watching. So it's going to be very, very awesome. And before I move on, I wanted to also mention that to create a just and sustainable future, like corruption needs to cease. Mm -hmm. So I don't want people to think that I'm just being woo woo with it. Like, honestly, like on the physical realm, we also have to like make corporations not as corrupt, make the, you know, politicians not as corrupt. Like, you know, once again, that's a perfect world, but if we yeah. want things yeah. to be more, I guess you would say in a way progressive or in a way that people's needs have to be met, there cannot be people at the top who are always in power and making sure that like the mass of people um, under them are, you know, starving, like not housed, all those types of things. Right. So, um, I just want people to remind, remember that like, yes, we, our action is very, very important and our intentions are incredibly important, but if corporations are still in our way, if corruption is still in our way, you know, of course there's not much we can do about it because they have the power. So mm -hmm. just a reminder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And where, um, where can folks sign up for this so we can, you know, get educated because <laughs> yeah. this information is so needed. So where can we sign up? Absolutely. So you can sign up at afroveganSociety.org slash events. Of course, there's a there's more of a URL after that, but that's the easiest place to go. That's not too jumbled. Yep, afroveganSociety.org slash events. It'll give you, you'll see um, NAVCON, the link right there um, at, at the top. Click right on it and you can click to RSVP for free since NAVCON is free for everybody. Yeah. So most of go there. And you have a ton of hundreds and hundreds of people signed up already. So I know it's going to be a huge success. And I'm so looking forward to it. Jamila, thank you so much for coming by today. Once again, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure.